Okay, so here comes Monty Roberts. And it's kind of a lonely time when you got a lot of time on your hands and and you're not going into the town and shifting around with a lot of people. So what do you do? Well, here is where I sit with my deer. Now, a lot of you won't have deer to sit with, but I love them. And so I sit with them, I visit with them, I tell them stories and they actually come and visit me every single day that I'm home. When I'm gone, they kind of stay away, but when I'm here, they come to see me. And doing things that we can do by ourselves, with our horse and other animals, is really important. And do you know that you can use this time to learn a lot of things? So today we're going to talk a lot about doing things with your horse and yourself. Because circumstances are such that we probably are going to be spending a lot of time with ourselves. And I believe that spending that time with your horse, your dog, a friend of yours that's four-legged, is a very good way to go. One of the things that I did in my past is to compete in 26 different disciplines at world-class levels, and another 26 that were non-competitive disciplines. There's both kinds. For instance, equine nutrition is non-competitive, and so is farriery, um, so is grooming techniques and things like that. Those are non-competitive disciplines that most of us have dealt with in our time, but at world-class levels, I won a world championship which included all of those things. I also won two world championships in rodeo, and one of them was team roping. And getting a rope and playing with it with my horse is fun. It's fun to do it, and I have fun with it. Roping something like this saddle that I have here seems okay to do that. Um, I can still do it. But why would you want a horseman to learn how to rope? Well, you don't have to. The greatest Olympians never roped. And they're horse people. The greatest trainers of racehorses probably never roped. But they're great horsemen. So I roped as well. Now, what, what does that do for your horsemanship? Well, if a horse is frightened of the rope, you don't rope well. If the horse is in the wrong place, when you get there and you want to rope the steer, it doesn't work so well. So training horses to rope and to bulldog won me two world championships. And do you know that those horses taught me so much about the training of all horses across the spectrum? You don't have to rope, you don't have to bulldog. But broaden your spectrum. I have hundreds of lessons in that book, From My Hands to Yours. It's a textbook. And there it is for you to look through it and clickety-clickety-click. Spending time with our animals is so educational. And it isn't that we learn how to do things A, B, C, D, E. No. Listen to your horse. They will teach you more than you can ever teach yourself. The working with horses in all of these factors sends to your body a muscle memory so that when your horse does something and you need to respond to the horse, to congratulate or to discipline. It'll happen. Your body will know what to do. That's the kind of education I would like every horseman to have. Oh, you know, you can learn it with a computer and you take his pulse rate and so forth and so on, his respiration rate, and then you know what the horse is doing. That's good. Wonderful. 
The computers are bringing a whole new level of learning about horses. But they will never completely substitute knowing your horse, loving your horse, causing your horse to want to do the factor that you're working on, whatever it is. I believe in time with the animals. Time. All by yourself. Talk to your horse. They don't understand English, that's for sure. But you do. And as you're talking and you're watching the horse respond to the things you're doing, you're implanting muscle memory, which will serve you well and well into the future of all of the things that you do with horses. Cause the horse to want to do it.